Okay, next we're going to take a look at some of the essential keyboard shortcuts for navigating inside of Animate. And I uh, gave you a, a sheet with all these keyboard shortcuts on it, but I would just want to go over them here as well. So most of the time, what you're going to be doing is working with layers and you're going to be working with tweens and the timeline. So the key, um, the key keyboard shortcuts are going to be for manipulating that timeline. So let's go through some examples here. So let's say I just go ahead and create a basic rectangle. And you can see that the rectangle that I created has a black stroke and a black fill. So when you're creating these graphics inside of Animate, what ends up happening is that these are separate items. So right now, I just wanted to explain this. So you'll see that I can select different parts of this shape and they're independent even though they're part of the same thing. It looks like a whole, whole item, but it's not. And this is where Animate differs a lot from programs like Photoshop and Illustrator. So I just created this rectangle, but it has separate individual pieces. Like for example, if I click on the middle of this and pull it away, that's my fill and that's my stroke and they're separate elements. Um, the other thing about Animate is that if I move your cursor over and hover near the item, you'll see that you get this curved icon. With that curve, you can shape the elements. And this is, again, something that you kind of can do in Illustrator, but not really out of the box. So, um, And here, it, it's an interesting way um, to create and manipulate objects to create, you know, certain certain things like what I'm doing here as I'm creating these curves, just pulling them in. And maybe this looks like a mushroom or something like that. And if you move your cursor over the points, you'll see that you get this other indicator, which means if I click and drag, I can actually manipulate that point. Now that's a lot like, you know, using the direct selection tool. But in this case, it's just manipulating that one point. So I can do a lot of customization to the objects that we draw inside of Animate to create you know, some really interesting things or you know, to get things to shape things the way that we want them. Okay. Now again, this object as it appears on the timeline is only occupying one frame. So if I play this, nothing's going to happen. There's only, there's only one frame to go. So the first keyboard shortcut that we want to take a look at is F5. So if I move my cursor over here and select frame 24, and this, this particular document set up to 24 frames per second. So here I want to mark out uh, one second. So I'm going to hold down my function key on my laptop. You might not have to do this if you have an extended keyboard and just hit F5. So what does F5 do? Well, you notice that the end of this area right here has kind of like this rectangle. So it basically it just means that this layer is extended up to frame 24, right? So it exists on the timeline up until this point, and then after that point, it, it no longer exists. It's no longer going to appear. So that's the keyboard shortcut F5. Now, you can find these keyboard shortcuts um, under Timeline. And you'll see here, there's the frame keyboard shortcut that I just used, F5. The other two we're going to take a look at is Keyframe and Blank Keyframe. OK, well, what if you wanted to show this particular object, but only up to you know, half a second? So we go up to frame 12. And then at frame 13, I don't want this to show anymore. So the keyboard shortcut for that would be F7. So F7 is a blank keyframe. So you notice that we have a keyframe here, but it's empty. It doesn't have uh, the same appearance as this one. This one's solid, and this one's empty. So now this object only appears on the timeline for 12 frames, and then it disappears. Okay. Now, the last keyboard shortcut 
would be F6, and that is to create a keyframe. But in order to keep, create a keyframe, we need an actual symbol. Right now, this is not a symbol. If you look in your library, you'll see that this object does not appear inside the library. It's still what I call a stage level object. It doesn't have um, the properties of a symbol. Now, there are three types of symbols that you can create in, in Animate. You can create a button symbol, you can create a graphic symbol, or you can create a movie clip symbol. So in order for us to uh, have those properties, we need an object that is a symbol first. So I'm going to create a new layer. And I have the oval tool selected. And let's say I'm going to change the stroke color to none. I don't want a stroke. And I'm going to change the fill color to something like this blue. And then I'll go ahead and draw out a circle. Notice that if you move your cursor a certain way, this circle next to my cursor is a small circle. So right now I'm creating an oval, but it will eventually get bigger and snap. And at that point, I'm now creating a perfect circle. And I don't have to hold down the shift key to do this. If you do hold down the shift key, you'll get a perfect circle. I just wanted to point out that when you're creating an oval, you'll see a small circle, when you're creating a perfect circle, you'll see the larger circle. So I'm going to go ahead and release. So on my new layer, I have this keyframe at the beginning, and this extends for 25, 24 frames. And what I want to do now is convert this into a symbol. So I first have to select it. So I'm going to select it with the selection tool. And there's a couple of different ways that you can convert this into the symbol. Um, first of all, you can go to Modify, Convert to Symbol. Um, so that's one way to do it, and the keyboard shortcut is F8. So the other way to do it is hitting F8. And then I get the Convert to Symbol dialog. And here are the three options. I can create a graphic, a movie clip, or a button. In this case, I'm just going to create a graphic symbol. I'll just give it a name, and click OK. Now that changes its appearance. Um, you notice that it doesn't have that shading anymore uh, because it's now a graphic symbol. And that that also appears in the library. And this is the icon for a graphic symbol. And you'll notice also the uh, on the layer, the appearance hasn't changed here. But now let's say that we want to do something with the circle. So I'm just going to move it over here, for example. So I have the initial keyframe. And then I want to introduce a couple more keyframes and then move this object and then I can do some tweening in between. So let's say if I want to go to frame 12 and I'm going to click on frame 12 on that layer. And if I hit F6 on the keyboard, that will create a keyframe. So now I can move this circle wherever I want it to go and just move it up here. And you'll see that that just changes the position. Right? There's no tweening involved. It just changes the position of the circle. So we have to do an additional step to create the animation. So if I right click or control click between these two keyframes, I can choose create classic tween. So it recognizes that there's a keyframe on the first frame and there's a keyframe on the 12th frame and it's going to tween between them and create the animation. I'll just finish off by going to frame 24. I'll click on frame 24 and hit F6. And then again, I'll move the circle to another location. And if I don't tween, it's just going to be the same. Just move over. So I want to tween in between. So again, I'm going to right click or control click and choose create classic tween. And that creates the animation going from the first frame to the last frame. So we've seen a few keyboard shortcuts here. We've seen F5 to create this, uh, extend the frame to a certain duration. We've seen F7 to create a blank keyframe to stop or to cut uh, the object from the timeline. 
And then we've seen F6 to create keyframes. And these keyframes will be those key positions on the timeline where we want the object to sit before it moves on to the next position. And the other keyboard shortcut that we used was F8. And F8 converted this object into a symbol that we see within the library. There's obviously tons more shortcuts uh, that you can learn inside of Animate. Best way to learn the keyboard shortcuts is when you're going to a menu to do something. Each menu item has a keyboard shortcut associated with it. And over time, what you can do is if you keep going back to this menu for the same thing over and over again. Instead of going back to the menu, you can commit that keyboard shortcut to memory and then you, it'll improve your workflow and you'll go a lot faster. So hope that hope that was helpful.